Alright guys, I'm back with my review of this week's WWE Monday Night Raw for March 11th, 2013. This was a crazy show. I'm just going over my notes. And that Jericho highlight reel, my god was that terrible, but it was actually so bad, it was entertaining. And definitely stands out more than anything else on this show. That stood out to me. Oh my god, that was just so bad. But I don't think the wrestlers... The wrestlers had to know this was bad. But they didn't show it. They didn't break character. They didn't start laughing. They just kept going. <laughs> uh, but anyways. The show starts off with the Paul Bear tribute video. Which I thought they did a fantastic job on. Undertaker comes out to pay his respects to Paul Bear. They have an urn in the ring, and they got his picture on the Titan Tron and everything. And then CM Punk's Titan Tron interrupts this, and he comes out and he says to Paul Bear, "Taker will always be perfect. He'll be 20 and 0, but to everyone else, he's going to be 20 and 1." And I know a lot of people are probably saying, "My God, this is so offensive," but I really didn't think it was that bad. I'm sure Paul Bear would have been cool with this, and. I mean, it, it fits Punk's character of demanding respect, but respecting no one else. So I kind of thought it actually worked for Punk, even though it was really just cheap heat. I mean, that's what it was, but I didn't think it was that bad. It wasn't that offensive. He didn't make fun of Paul Bearer. He didn't put Paul Bearer down. He was just talking about how he's going to beat The Undertaker, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was way more offended when Michael Cole was talking about Jerry Lawler's dead mother. That was much worse. Um, during commercial, Kane comes out and tries to choke slam Punk off the ramp, but Punk escapes. So Kane's running around backstage. He's going crazy. He throws Alex Riley in the locker room. We get Big Show versus Seth Rollins. Big Show throws Rollins into Ambrose on the outside, and then he throws Reigns into the barricade. So Ambrose attacks him from behind. Ref rings the bell, so technically... The Shield have now lost a match. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened here. And Big Show does a good job fighting them off, but eventually he gets speared by Reigns, and they hit the triple powerbomb on him. And I'm glad they showed this here, because it happened after Raw, probably for that WWE active crap, uh, last week. So here, I'm glad they showed it, because triple powerbombing the Big Show is impressive, and here, more people get to see it. Punk tells Vicky to get Kane under control, but she's offended by what he did during the Paul, tri Paul Bear tribute, so she puts him in a no DQ match with Kane. They show some Paul Bear clips throughout the entire show. I thought that was really awesome. We get Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler in an awesome match here. Just let Daniel Bryan wrestle. It's not that hard. I mean, I really hope they do this Daniel Bryan versus Kane thing at WrestleMania and end this and then push him as a singles guy and give him a real push. But Daniel Bryan gets Dolph in the no lock. AJ distracts the ref. Big E pulls Dolph to the ropes. Daniel Bryan gets him in another no lock. And Dolph counters, hits the zigzag, gets the win. I was surprised. I actually thought Dolph was going to lose another match here. And afterwards, Big E hits his move on Daniel Bryan. It's supposed to be Tensai versus Fandango. Fandango refuses to wrestle. He wants Naomi to say his name. Uh, Tensai grabs the mic, so Fandango leaves. He's got a debut on SmackDown. I'm, I can see... Oh my god. I know I said he would have to debut because Booker was pissed, but now that I think about it, Booker may say something like, if you don't debut next week, you're going to be fired. And that means they're going to drag this out even longer. So hopefully I'm wrong and they do something where Booker says you have to debut tonight or you're fired, but we'll see what happens on SmackDown. Rhodes Scholars have reunited, <laughs> and they do their own version of the New Age Outlaws entrance. Oh, you were not aware of this. <laughs> this was great. Great stuff. So it's the New Age Outlaws versus Rhodes Scholars. Cody hits Road Dog with a disaster kick, and Brock Lesnar comes out. Road Scholars run off, and Brock F5s the New Age Outlaws. Heyman cuts a promo, says Brock will face Triple H at Mania, only if they get to choose the stip. And they will not reveal the stip until after Triple H signs the contract. And I actually read on a wrestling forum I go to that <laughs> someone said, I hope it's that, I think, Lions Den match that Ken Shamrock had where they fight in an octagon. 
That would be pretty hilarious. <clears throat> Mark Henry versus Kofi Kingston. Henry catches Kofi jumping off the top rope. It's the world's strongest slam. Uh, gets the win. Backstage, Cody's flirting with Caitlyn when Damian Sandow walks up and says he's got a couple dates for him. And it's the Bella Twins. They have returned. This is awesome news. They were two of my favorite divas. So I'm glad they're back. And Vicky shows up and says their date will have to wait since they have another match tonight against Sheamus and Orton. It's really not fair at all, but Ryback versus Heath Slater. Mark Henry comes out to watch the match, and Ryback squashes Slater. McIntyre runs in and gets shell-shocked. Henry walks down to the ring, hits the world's strongest slam on McIntyre. Ryback shell-shocks him again. Henry slams him again. They talk some trash to each other. Mark Henry leaves. Del Rio versus Cesaro. Del Rio puts Cesaro in the ropes and he hits him in the back nine times fans are counting and then he finishes it with a backcracker so I really hope he's not going to start doing this every single match to me it just feels like he's stealing Sheamus' thing where he clubs the chest so if Del Rio starts doing this nine elbows in the back and then a backcracker I mean, that's just, he's stealing another guy's thing, and I just, I don't like that because I feel like he already stole Daniel Bryan's yes chant by the CCC thing, except it's not nearly as over as Daniel Bryan's yes chant was. People just don't give a shit. And I just, I hate the fact that he's stolen two things now if he does continue to do this, but Cesaro taps to the arm bar. Uh, Stryker tries to talk to Kane, but Kane doesn't want to say anything. He just walks away with the urn. Sheamus and Orton versus the Rhodes Scholars. Wasn't really a bad tag match here. I just I didn't really care about this. Orton RKO's Cody and Sheamus bro kick Sandow for the win. During the commercial, the Shield attacks Orton and Sheamus on the stage. And then we get Jericho's highlight reel with The Miz. Oh, Jericho is saying something about how budget cuts. There's no Jeritron 3000 or something like that. It's just this black carpet on the ring. There's nothing in there. No monitors or sofas or anything. Um, so it's really just Jericho standing out there. And he keeps talking about that. And he brings the Miz out to talk about the Marine 3 and how great it is. So Wade Barrett comes out and says, His movie's better. We have to watch another shitty movie clip. They all start arguing. And it was just really bad. Cole is saying... Cole actually says... This is probably the worst segment in Raw history. Um, he keeps talking about how bad it is, how terrible this is, and the announcers are just laughing the entire time. And then Brad Maddox comes out, and then they really start laughing. They're laughing so hard, you could barely understand what Maddox was saying when he's trying to put together the match with uh, Barrett versus the winner. But that's what he says. Brad Maddox says it's going to be Wade versus the winner of Miz and Jericho. He's going to defend the Intercontinental title next week. It was just so awkward. And Brad Maddox is already an awkward character. That's why he's so great. He's really just awkward with everything he says. He either talks really low or he makes a really bad joke or something. And that's part of his appeal, I think. So when he comes out and the segment's already doing really, really bad and no one cares. Um, putting a character like Maddox out there just makes everything more confusing, I guess, for the fans. Uh, so <laughs> Maddox makes this match, and he says, you, uh, you're going to face, and he doesn't say his name at first. Um, I thought it was hilarious, though. And then he says, get your Jeritron 5,000 or 3,000, get it out of here. And Jericho <laughs> says... Completely serious, it's already gone. And the medic says, I know. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck was this? But it was so great, it has to be seen. Man, I actually, thinking about this now, I'm disappointed I already deleted it off the DVR. I'd watch this again. <laughs> Hopefully it's on YouTube somewhere. Uh, but anyways, Jericho throws Miz into Barrett. Barrett attacks him. Jericho gets attacked first, so technically Jericho wins this match. He should face Wade Barrett, but of course they make it a triple threat match. 
and Miz hits the scroll crushing finale on Barrett. Jericho hits him with the code breaker. So next week it'll be the triple threat. Sin Cara versus Jack Swagger. Zeb cuts a promo on Sin Cara, as he calls him. And Swagger wins the Patriot Lock. He refuses to break the hold. Del Rio runs out and goes for the arm bar, but Swagger escapes. They did a funny skit with Halle Berry, David Otunga, and Kane. I actually didn't think this was too bad. I thought this was actually kind of funny. Ryback versus Mark Henry is set for SmackDown. This should be interesting. I'm sure something's going to happen so that they can do this again at WrestleMania. And we get the last match, Punk versus Kane, no DQ. Kane tries to choke slam Punk on a chair, but he counters, hits a DDT on Kane. And Punk gets ready for the GTS, but he hears Undertaker's gong go off. And he turns around, and Kane hits him with the choke slam for the win. Taker comes out, they do the pose to each other, and Punk hits Kane with the urn. And he runs away, and the Undertaker comes down, and Punk has got the urn on him. He's mocking Undertaker, and Taker just does the thumb across the throat. So I thought this was a great way to end the show. Punk versus Taker needed something, and I'm really not sure what they would have done otherwise. I'm sure they had something else planned, but uh, yeah, that's a good question, because this actually makes the match at Mania... I'm not saying by any means it's a good thing Paul Bearer died, don't get me wrong, but because they're using this as the angle for the match, what the hell would they do if this didn't happen? I mean, they wouldn't be using the urn. I guess it would have been the same exact thing minus the urn. It would have been Punk laying out Kane or something and Undertaker coming down, and then Punk mocking Undertaker and Taker doing the same exact thing. So I guess the only thing they really added was the urn. But yeah, this has built up to the Mania match. For Punk Taker, they have a reason to fight. Punk doesn't respect The Undertaker, and Taker wants to keep the streak. So it's actually fairly simple uh, booking, but they're really just going to start pushing CM Punk as this disrespectful asshole who mocks The Undertaker. I know last week it didn't show it on Raw. But there was a picture up on the Wrestling Observer where Punk is wearing Undertaker's hat and mocking him again. So I'm sure that's what they're going to go for uh, building up to WrestleMania. So anyways, this Raw I actually thought was a pretty good show. There was definitely some moments that the show was just kind of down. I didn't really care about it myself personally. And then you have the Jericho Highlight Reel segment, which was the standout of the show. Um, but yeah, I have to say I did enjoy this Raw, so I thought this one wasn't too bad. Anyways, that's my review of this week's Raw. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's Raw in the comments, and thanks for watching. Bye. I didn't think it was that bad. It wasn't that offensive. He didn't make fun of Paul Bearer. He didn't put Paul Bearer down. He was just talking about how he's going to beat The Undertaker, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was way more offended when Michael Cole was talking about Jerry Lawler's dead mother. That was much worse. Um, during commercial, Kane comes out and tries to choke slam Punk off the ramp, but Punk escapes. So Kane's running around backstage. He's going crazy. He throws Alex Riley in the locker room. We get Big Show versus Seth Rollins. Big Show throws Rollins into Ambrose. Alright guys, I'm back with my review of this week's WWE Monday Night Raw for March 11th, 2013. This was a crazy show. I'm just going over my notes. And that Jericho highlight reel, my God, was that terrible. But it was actually so bad, it was entertaining. And definitely stands out more than anything else on this show. Then Tron interrupts this, and he comes out, and he says to Paul Bearer, Taker will always be perfect, he'll be 20-0, and 0, but to everyone else, he's going to be 20-1. and 1. And I know a lot of people are probably saying, my God, this is so offensive, but I really didn't think it was that bad. I'm sure Paul Bearer would have been cool with this. And, I mean, it, it fits Punk's character of demanding respect, but respecting no one else. So I kind of thought it actually worked for Punk, even though it was really just cheap heat. I mean, that's what it was, but he goes on the outside, and then he throws Reigns into the barricade. So Ambrose attacks him from behind, Ref rings the bell, so technically 
the Shield have now lost a match. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened here. And Big Show does a good job fighting them off, but eventually he gets speared by Reigns and they hit the triple powerbomb on him. And I'm glad they showed this here because it happened after Raw probably for that WWE active crap uh, last week. So here, I'm glad they showed it because triple power that stood out to me. Oh my god, that was just so bad. But I don't think the wrestlers, the wrestlers had to know this was bad, but they didn't show it. They didn't break character. They didn't start laughing. They just kept going. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the show starts off with the Paul Bear tribute video, which I thought they did a fantastic job on. Undertaker comes out to pay his respects to Paul Bear. They have an urn in the ring, and they got his picture on the Titantron and everything. And then CM Punk's Titan.